everyone i am praveena and today we are here to discuss about the advancement in reproductive assistive technology when you hear about this new technology i am sure you all will have several doubts in mind though me so we have an expert over here to discuss about all this technology and she is a renowned doctor across the world she is an obstetrician and gynecologist and specialist in reproductive medicine and laparoscopic surgery she is the chairman of prashant multi speciality hospital and medical director of prashant fertility research center she is none other than dr geeta haripriya it's my honor to welcome her onto this session welcome dr geeta there are patients with recurrent fibroids so doctor how would you manage this case so uh, recurrent means that means they've had it once you've treated it and then it's come back so the first uh, treatment generally with these fibroids we if they are small and if they are few in number we don't ask for surgery we ask them to go ahead with their treatments and try to make them deliver and this happens in quite a few patients but there are some people who have large fibroids in all different uh, shapes sizes locations so uh, for them surgery is better so we have a 3d laparoscopy and many a time we are able to do it through the laparoscope and uh, you know there is precision in suturing and we get very good results with these patients so we the most important thing to understand is you have to get them to uh go for fertility treatment immediately after the healing period is over which is about 2 months to 3 months after that it's very important that they go in straight for treatment either uh, you know natural or which, which they should not waste too much time on it because fibroids are recurrent condition it will keep coming back again and again so at least an intrauterine insemination of the tubes are okay and the male factor is okay but if there is any disturbance in any other parameter better they go directly for ivf so but if they are a normal otherwise they can try for a normal pregnancy and uh, the, but they have to go step by step immediately if uh, a natural doesn't work they go for an iui three cycles of iui doesn't work then they go to the next level and uh, despite the surgery our the treatment is not working and the fibroids have come back uh, once again what do we do we generally try to give medication to try and shrink the fibroids and in the period that it has shrunk we try to do uh, the ivf or iui mainly ivf because we know that it's going to come back again so this is we try to avoid a second surgery as far as possible but there are situations where there are too many they are not responding to medication then we go in for a second surgery and we do it and uh, medications today are, are extremely effective and uh, medication is the first line of management if it fails and then we are not able to get a pregnancy in the time when the fibroids have shrunk then we go in for surgery okay again there is a belief in people like you know who has undergone ivf treatment they have to undergo cesarean section so normal delivery won't be possible for those kind of women so how far is it uh not really because if the patient is young they don't have any medical problems no sugar no hypertension and uh, their baby is within uh, you know normal size not very big not 4 kg like that then definitely we can allow a normal delivery some of them have blood pressure they have a uh, Uh, diabetes which is uh, uh, not very well controlled and uh, uh, some of them uh, even have uh, uh, very small uh, babies uh, we call it as a low birth weight uh, babies and when the water level around the baby is already low and when they have a placenta which is very low or when they have a twin gestation that is the time when we actually decide to go in for a, a cesarean section otherwise we permit normal delivery for all of them even for twin gestations if both the babies are head down then sometimes we permit if the patient wants to we even permit them to have a normal delivery uh doctor we have heard about the new technology that is uh, stem cell and prp treatment so could you please tell us like which are the categories of patients really require this treatment yeah now there are two three major indications for stem cell and prp treatment two in the female and one in the male so um the stem cell is a, a research product so as in, on a research setting Uh, we use it when the reserve of the ovary or the capability of the ovary to produce eggs is very low and uh, we also use uh, the platelet rich plasma which is derived by taking uh, the blood in uh, isolating the platelets adding growth factors and then using it to inject into the ovary so this is one type of treatment 
Now the second, there are some people who have a very thin lining of the uterus and they just don't respond to medication which we normally use. So for these patients, the stem cell and PRP once again helps. We inject it under the lining of the uterus and after that we give medication. We Because the uh, stem cells and the PRP are able to stimulate all the mother cells in the lining, it helps to build up the lining and uh, we are able to get good success rates by improving the lining of the uterus. The third indication is for the male. If there is a very low uh, if azoospermia and there are no sperms at all, then we inject stem cell and PRP into the testis and three months later we either uh, um, we aspirate the sperms and see whether there is any uh, improvement and if it doesn't happen then we do a micro TC and check whether improvement has happened. Thank you so much Dr. Geeta for giving your valuable time.